चेक 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 वन टू थ्री वन टू थ्री गाइज कैन यू हियर मी जस्ट चेकिंग दी ऑडियो वन सेक लेट मी नो इफ यू गैस कैन हियर मी ओके फाइन यू न्यू योर फोन What's up? Hello, 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 hello. Can you guys hear me clearly? Everything is awesome. Everything is fine. How are you guys doing? I hope you all have your coffee ready for today's session. Today's session again is going to be very exciting because we're going to learn a lot of weird things that are happening again in the stock market. And also, it's a it's currently at a very crucial point. The current stock market is at a very crucial point. I don't know how many of you all remember. I don't know how many of you all were there for the last week's session, or was it last? Yeah, last week's session that we did in Dubai. we spoke about the market that might be correcting very soon because it has it was overheated it was it had gone up too high it had hit its upward resistance i don't know how many of you all remember that how many of you all were there in the last uh, session where we spoke about if anyone wants to take new positions i said do not take new positions right now because from a technical standpoint it doesn't look very attractive it the market was slightly overheated and i said wait let's wait for another week and assess what is happening with the market and right now as you see i hope you have not deployed the money with fomo right i hope you are not uh, putting too much money into the market right now i'll tell you it's going to get much worse coming uh, towards the next few things um, some people are saying okay nikhil is saying not sadistic but we were waiting for bad news it is coming this week uh, nikhil most likely it is coming uh, this week and i'll talk about some triggers that are being seen in the world which is the macro economic play there are some triggers coming up i don't know how many of you all have actually read the news articles i would also appreciate if people don't spam uh, in the chat box because let's do it and learn as we grow anyone spams i'm just going to put you guys in time out right like for example rakshit is spamming right now so i wouldn't uh, appreciate that rakshit let's keep it clean let's talk about knowledge that is what we're here for today whoever spams i'm just going to put you in time out so that you don't spam again after that okay so let's focus on the learnings first and when i'm when i'm ready to tell you to spam that time you spam not right now right that we'll do towards the end first let's understand more about what is happening with the world economics okay so let's do this uh very exciting man this week let me show you okay oof okay so for all the people who were there um let's say for all the people who were there last week right i don't know how many of you all remember this but we did this last week as well where we spoke about the market looking something like this we said that this is the line that the uh, bse index is looking at right now plus we also spoke about market being overheated and we said if it goes below this it is going to be slightly scary i think we did it somewhere when the market was i think 6 december when did we do the last live maybe on 2nd december if i'm not wrong i'm not sure exactly uh, but when we did the research on the last live we said that the market might go down and it has slightly corrected from when we have done in fact few days ago the market corrected and this was the line we drew and we said it should come down right the sme uh, bsc uh, index should come down because it had gone up a bit too much that's why i said do not buy anything right now now the question is is it a good time to buy right now right do you think it is a good time to buy right now i would say let's look at some uh, odds okay well, what might happen in the next few days let's look at nifty first more important as i said as we predicted with nifty right let me zoom out a little bit here this is what nifty's graph look like we knew that it was going up a bit too much we wanted it to come down and retest this line for a positive momentum upwards but that did not happen in fact it went below this line um, and what i would say is it will definitely come down a little bit maybe to retest 18300 preferably it should not go i don't think it will go below 18000 so that is a little safe barrier we have Uh, because it's a round number but i think it has already gone down below 18500 so that is something that it has broken in the last uh, trading session as well and in the upcoming trading sessions it doesn't seem very likely that it will go up because there are a few triggers that doesn't seem that it will go up and i'll talk about those triggers as well now i would think the market should come till here before a pullback which is 18000 uh, just making a line with a different color so we remember this line in my opinion i can be completely wrong okay don't take my opinion for everything but i believe that it should come retest this line and then start going up so my opinion would be anywhere in this region okay anywhere in this region would be rebuying zone which is around 18200 if it comes down we would take it as an opportunity to buy small amount of money not too much not all your capital a small amount of money can be deployed around this time not right now i would say the market is still overheated if it comes down to this we will do small buying here okay Okay, if it comes here, we will do small buying here, and if it breaks eighteen thousand, which I hope doesn't break, 
then we do big buy okay but till then this is the next validation trigger right now here where we the risk reward ratio looks very attractive okay till now we've understood this much only from charting right and we knew this right for all the people who kept saying you can't uh, accurately understand where to buy where to sell i'm confused should i buy right now should i sell right now if you're watching the lives we have been accurately saying when to deploy and when i mean not we i have been actually accurately saying when to deploy and when to not deploy because it's common sense it is not some magic that i'm pulling out of thin air and saying abhi mat kharido mere ko future pata hai i don't do all that it just looks overheated logic says don't invest let it come down logic will say now you can take a good risk reward ratio and start investing again okay so right now again do not touch that is my problem okay now apart from this i want to talk about two things that are happening in the space two important things that are happening in the next week right one is uh this one okay look at this market week i don't know how many of you all have read this article but if you haven't read this article i strongly suggest you go and check out live mint and read this article this came out on 10th december which was yesterday it's not today's news it's yesterday's news but please go read this article it talks about what is happening in the next few days and if you want to know if you want to predict what is going to happen in the next few days you can check out investing.com this is where i go and find out there is something called economic calendar over here okay economic calendar comes on the top right here click on that and just do this week you will see all the important triggers that are happening from the macro economic level on this here okay so if i actually see what is happening here on monday which is 12th which is tomorrow right we have the gdp data coming out for the great britain which is european markets might be very volatile and if the gdp uh, and it also talks about what is the previous and what is the forecast so if it goes below or above the forecast you can obviously assume that if it goes below the gdp forecast is below then it is considered a bad sign if the gdp goes above then it is considered a good time you get my point yeah now this is coming out with respect to great britain so all their stats are coming out it will impact the market trust me it is going to impact the market even the manufacturing production data will come out as well apart from that indian data is also coming out this week what is the indian data coming out the cpi which is a um, what is that consumer price index which is your inflation data right what is going to happen with this last time it was 6.477 we are forecasting a 6.4 but if it goes above 6.4 the market will take a full u turn and come down but if it goes below 6.4 or if it is at 6.4 then the market will be like bach gaye hum log we are safe understood so this two three data points are coming apart from that even us is uh, thing i think is coming on 13th if i'm not wrong us data is also coming on 13th uh let me check expectations is coming tomorrow itself this is okay but i think on 13th of this month i think us data yeah, look at this all the us data is coming out on this time as well now us data again is going to change the trend of the market always changes the trend of the market so we don't know if this time is going to change the trend or not but as i said next few days is very volatile 12th and 13th and 14th let's catch 12th 13th 14th uh, till thursday this week is going to be very volatile and i would say and also this week is going to set the trend for the upcoming weeks okay if the if the data comes out okay not bad then the trend of the next few weeks will go upwards right but if the data data comes bad then you can be happy because the trend will go downwards and if it goes downwards all that excess capital that we have saved up from the last one two weeks we will start deploying them slowly not like fools where we put everything at one go we will start deploying 20 30% of that and wait again for a smaller dip understood logic see where what are we trying to do here i'm trying to make you understand how to assess the market right it is not just about charts it is not just about everything else we have to look at global data we have to look at local data and then we have to make assumptions on risk reward ratio right if i invest now the risk is slightly higher why should i invest now let me have some patience things are looking very weird for all you know it might just shoot up again and start rallying then it's okay then we have new positions to take right but if it doesn't shoot up then we get saved so that is what we're doing right now and we predicted that fall might happen the fall has happened now we're looking at more fall happening as well so let's wait until this week and figure out what to do next this is something which is on the macro level on the micro level how many of you all are holding paytm shares how many of you guys are holding paytm shares let me know in the in the chat box ah oh, nice call not me thankfully no vijay says okay never bought smart people <laughs> okay so there is another oh, piyush jain has bought it uh, best of luck is it a good time to buy paytm boss i am coming to that okay this is a very good question so paytm is in the news quite recently it went up by 7% mainly because uh, paytm came out with something called as a buyback offer look at this so paytm surges on buyback plan right 
Paytm came out and said, we have a lot of money in the bank account. We're going to do a buyback. All right. Now, as we know, and as we've been learning over a long period of time, right, we know that buybacks are good for a company. This most of the time buybacks are good for a company, but a company that is not making more profit. Is it good for the company to use its cash reserves and do a buyback? Question mark. I'm asking you guys for a company that doesn't make profits. Okay. Is it good for the company to do a buyback or should the company focus on making profits first and then doing a buyback? Yeah. Big problem. Understand how the world is working, right? Right. Understand how the world is working. Cool. So this is something that is very wrong. What is happening right now is wrong, but obviously the Paytm stock went up by 7%. Then we have another beautiful article that came out again by this um, N Mahalakshmi, which talks about the good, bad and the ugly. And they're saying why Paytm buyback is actually happening. Is Paytm buyback happening for retail investors like me and you, right? Who have bought the money and want to exit at a small rate or is Paytm buyback happening to bail out the big investors who have come? Think about it, right? Because the big investors now get a nice exit because Paytm is down 70%. Okay. Let me just show you just in perspective. What, how does Paytm chart look like for all the people who have invested in Paytm? This is how Paytm looks like. I can't even like go up. Okay. This is crazy. This is how Paytm charts looks like, right? So all the people who had bought Paytm, all the big investors who had bought Paytm could never exit because it never looked attractive. Yes. IEX did the same thing. But the thing is Gauri Shankar IEX actually was making profit. I am okay with IEX doing a buyback, whatever reasons they had IEX made profit. So I'm okay with that. But here they've not made a profit. They're still going ahead to make profit. And in fact, with UPI, they're actually suffering even more because now more and more people are using UPI, right? So that is again, another problem. Satya, we did a IEX uh, review. I think two to three weeks back, we spoke about IEX buyback. You can check out the two, three weeks, uh, two, three weeks back video. So. Have a look at this article, just Google Paytm buyback, the good, bad and ugly. And this clearly mentions that a company that is just trying to take the stock price up, even Nika did the same thing. You remember Nika gave a nice bonus to all the investors, but do you see a very similar trend? All companies that have big shareholding, right? All companies that have big players of the shareholding are being somehow weirdly manipulated into doing things that are not supposed to be done. Right. This is not supposed to happen. This is not right from a corporate governance standpoint. It is not correct. But the bonus from Nika was a similar example. Now Paytm buyback when it makes no sense as a, is a similar example. So all of these things keep coming and trying to give a fake Dilasa to people. Right now, what will happen? The buyback soon. Okay. What if we, all of us will start buying? Right. And if all of us start buying, then what happens? The stock will again fall down after a point because the fundamentals of the stock are not very great. Yes, that is the problem. Now, very good question by Rishikesh. Paytm has cash reserves. Yes. And let's understand Paytm's cash reserves very clearly. Okay. Let's look at this. Um, so Paytm has a net cash pile. Let me zoom in a little bit more of 9,100 crores as of September. But out of that 9,100 crores, 5,600 crores was from the IPO proceeds, which is left from the IPO proceeds. So basically they have 4,000 crores left. Okay. Out of 9,100 crores, 5,000 crores was the money that they got from the IPO, remaining money that they have from the IPO. 4,000 crores or 3,500 crores approximately is basically left in the bank account, which is their old money. So they can only do buyback from their old money. They cannot touch IPO money. This is very clear by SEBI that SEBI says if you raise an IPO and you take money for some reason, you have to use that money for the actual reason. You cannot do buybacks with that money. So now what usually happens, a buyback is announced. Okay. At a very high rate. Okay. Obviously small investors like me and you will maybe sell Paytm to the buyback tender, but the big investors will talk to private equity. People will talk to big mutual fund houses and say, let us do the, I will sell it to you. You buy it from me. I will sell it to you. You buy it from me. So that is what might happen. The dealings, the dealings behind might be bigger than what you might actually see right now. Okay. So this is not in good light for retail investors like me and you, this is more for private equity investors, the big investors who did not get an exit. They might exit now by getting another big person. It's like a Bakra game, right? These guys got caught. They'll find one more Bakra and they'll sell it to one more Bakra and that guy get caught. He'll find one more Bakra, sell it to one more Bakra. No offense to Bakras, right? But this is what will keep happening. It's like a very weird scheme, but this is what happens usually in the entire market. It's very common. Nothing wrong in that. It's very, very, very common. Yeah. So this is what is happening again with Paytm. So you guys can check this out. 
um, and there's a recent article that came out saying Paytm can't use IPO proceeds for buybacks. Firm's liquidity to be used, and now if firm's liquidity to be used, how much will it be used? This is a very good case study we are learning, right? Let's understand what is the psychology behind this, and this we'll understand on 13th, right? We will understand on 13th. So we will understand on 13th, and we'll understand what is going to happen. Cool. Apart from that, another very big macroeconomic news. Did you guys see tech stocks have fallen in the last two sessions? Okay, look at this. For example, Infosys, as we saw this Infosys, we made these lines and it hit the upper resistance and it has taken a massive deep down, 3% down. Um, TCS, 1.73% down. HCL Tech, 7% down. Look at this, with the gap down and 7% down, with huge volume, right? Does anyone know why this is happening? Does anyone know why this is happening? There's a problem. There's a macroeconomic problem that is happening here. And I'll tell you what the problem is, right? People, my profit vanished in HCL Tech. Okay. Now, basically, this is a good time to take an exit. If I had to be honest over here, this is a good time for all the people who booked profit. Like we took a position here. I would exit right here and take whatever gains I've got, right? Either tak, we've got whatever this gain is. Two and a half percent. I would take an exit here right now. Finished. Game over. Right. Tata LXC didn't fall yet. It's still struggling over there. But Infosys and this one, I would take an exit right now. Mainly because of what is happening with the guidelines. Okay. First of all, it is correction. Very clear correction. As you can see, HCL Tech rallied like a maniac, which it shouldn't have rallied. Obviously, then the correction comes in. Then you see TCS also went up from here to here. A correction is coming in. But the main question now is, will this continue to go ahead in an upward momentum or will it continue to go ahead in a downward momentum or will it not do anything? These are the three options we have. Now, if you read this article, which talks about why HCL shares went down, HCL basically came and said that the revenue guidance that they had for the next quarter is now going down. Basically, they earlier said that we will make more revenue and now they're saying we might make less revenue. Why we might make less revenue? They are fearing that the macroeconomic situation might not recover and it might do well. And we might see a slowdown in multiple sectors that are linked to the IT sector. Okay, so IT's biggest clients will be BFSI, which is banking and financial services. FinTech is a big sector for them. They are seeing that we might reduce the revenue that comes from there. So for example, in October, we had increased our guidance from 13.5 to 14.5. We had certain assumptions which help us to devise a 16 to 17% services growth rate. Uh, but after, but we are seeing a bit higher right now. BFSI is the segment which is a little bit impacted by the problems of macroeconomics followed by tech companies again in US. So what is happening is what uh, I think SBI mutual fund also gave a warning on this thing. Small warnings have started will become bigger as we move into 2023. Avoid tech stocks and avoid export oriented sectors in general. You will get them for cheaper over the next six months. Do you guys understand this very clearly for next six months? You might see a slowdown. Okay. Slowdown means doesn't mean the stock will go down. Slowdown means the stock might not move. Or if the next quarter result comes bad, it will definitely go down. But if you're anything, if you're invested in export oriented stocks, or if you're invested in IT sector, you might be seeing a slowdown. So for all the people who are sitting in profits with IT sector can think about doing a small exit or maybe profit booking right now and save that money after a few months, you can rebuy these IT stocks. Again, these are all projections assuming that the world economy goes bad and the BFSI sector and the tech sector goes bad. And in fact, even if you look at the US market right now, uh, let me just show you the US market. US market is also back onto its downward channel. It had up, down, up, down, up, and now it's going towards the downward channel. And this is the line that we have drawn. But it looks like, again, depending on day after tomorrow's data, till day after tomorrow, we cannot talk about anything. But till day after tomorrow, we have to wait. But if the data is bad, you know that this is going back down like this. And if this goes back down like this, you know that our Indian market will also take a nice dive down to 18,100, maybe even lower. Right. So this is what we need to wait for the next two, three days for all the people who are expecting bad news. This might be actually very bad news. OK, might be actually very bad news. Uh, same story with happiest minds. Now, again, this depends on companies that are very heavily dependent on the services aspect. For example, I think happiest minds 
has more of a cloud uh, aspect more than legacy services right so happiest minds might get affected because of macroeconomic it sector going down but from a fundamental standpoint i think they're slightly more protected for example tata lxc again i feel is slightly more protected why because they are working towards revolutionary technology which is robotics which is ai which is all of those things which will always be there right it is not going to have, go through a recession because right now services industry might take a small hit is what people are saying kpit yes might take a small hit let we'll we'll go through all the stocks again once more before we go into it first let's understand macroeconomics before we go into the stocks again understood so this is what uh, that is why you see infosys wipro tech mahindra everything took a small beating because people are getting scared um with what is going to happen in the future and what might happen and now all that work from home everything is almost over everyone's coming back to office so your margins might get affected again so see this many top tier it firms have recently given cautious forecasts so far amid the economic uncertainty globally as the global central banks tighten their monetary policies that's why i said we need to figure out what is going to happen but this is a very important macroeconomic picture that you need to look at then you might say shashank if all this is happening where do we invest is that a question that you might have which sector do we invest because now it sector is becoming a problem it sector is becoming a problematic sector uh, export is going to become a problematic sector so where do we invest for the next 6 months right as i said india's consumption story is still going on well so india's consumption story is doing well travel and tourism in india is doing really well as you can see people are traveling like mad people right now so people are traveling to other countries people are traveling in india a lot and you might be seeing all your friends putting out so many photos and thing right and abhi to we are entering the wedding season where wedding season after wedding season honeymoon season happens so you will see the travel sector and hospitality sector doing well uh, infrastructure is anyway doing well so that is good right so but these type of companies you can start tracking which are more infrastructure plays which are more into uh, consumer plays and consumer consumption plays so i would go for consumer consumption plays more than anything else that is what i'm saying right fmcg is recession proof so you can take some bets on fmcg recession proofs uh ind hotels yeah mahindra okay so mahindra and mahindra another thing right look at this mahindra and mahindra which is mahindra holiday is plans to invest 1500 crores on expansion in the next 3 years now why are they expanding right now and not in the past why are they going aggressive right now taj hotels also we spoke about recently that ihcl is also going a very aggressive right now right why are they doing this because they know that india's consumption play in the next few years is going to be massive and because of the global economics being bad india will consume locally more and if india will consume locally more we want to be ready and the disposable income for indians now has slightly gone up for i'm talking about the middle class disposable income has slightly gone up so because of that i can go buy more stuff right i can afford to go for an itc lunch or i can afford to go for a taj hotel and stay for a day right so this is what is happening right now going forward cool taking a small 5 second breather did you guys understand now what is happening with macroeconomics did you guys understand what is happening with macroeconomics guys the next week looks very volatile right if it's bad it will go down if it's good it will go back up right either which way i would say it stocks now look little uh, tuck 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 little scary so i would take a i would profit book if it was me uh, or take some amount of money out of it and then reinvest later i'm not saying fully exit i would never say fully exit but i would say next one two weeks let's be very careful but keep your money accumulated because you would have just got your salary one week ago so do not deploy your salary right now got it cool let's go into stocks one by one now let's look at the technical analysis for stocks yeah oh interesting no what's happening from the world economics uh, level very i love this because i keep looking at what's happening on the world standpoint uh, and because of that we understand a lot what can happen with india as well so this is why i really love doing uh, ma mainly weekend research because every week we understand globally what is happening and what is happening locally as well so it becomes very interesting okay chalo nifty we saw bank nifty again needs a massive correction bank nifty again is not correcting even on the rsi indicator which is relative strength index it is overvalued right now bank nifty is sitting at bhagwan jane all time high right uh, so we need bank nifty to calm down a little bit in life and say boss relax karo uh, please come down but can someone tell me why bank nifty is going up so much can someone tell me why bank nifty is going up so much chetan we won't be doing csk share today so don't worry we're not going to talk about it uh but can someone tell me why bank nifty is going up so much yeah 
Do you know that the interest rates are hiking? Yes, Nishant Agarwal is absolutely right. Interest rates are going up. Now, if interest rates go up, what happens to banks? Banks make more money from uh, average people, right? So if banks make more money when the interest rate goes up, obviously when the interest rates were low, banks were suffering. But now if interest rates are high, banks will benefit. Whether it's PSU, whether it's private, doesn't matter. Correct? So that keeps going up. So interest rate goes up, it is good for the bank. So banking is now at an all time high, which it needs to calm down a little bit. It's gone up a bit too much, a small correction, come down to 42,000, maybe 42,500 and then re-rally upwards because this is not sustainable. And the last time this happened, we saw this. This was the last time it happened. Look at this. It gave a massive rally over here and you can actually calculate the rally here. The last time this rally happened, it was a 20, almost a 27, 30% rally that happened here, right? A 29% rally and then it took a nice downturn from this 29% rally to a 10% fall, which was quite significant, right? Even now, if you see the market with respect to Bank Nifty, it, sorry, yeah, if you see the market, it has again gone up 17%. It needs another 7 to 8% fall right now, uh, which is pending. It will come. It will definitely come. It is not like it is not going to come. Aaj ne to kal aayega hi, right? Sabka time aayega types. So it is going to happen and it is going to fall. So don't worry about that. Okay. This we already spoke about Axis Bank. Yeah. But we won't take an exit yet. We will understand. See, even Axis Bank is at overvalued position, like massively overvalued right now. Actually, this for all this was anyway, we were doing swing trade here, right? I would take an exit here. Right now, I would take an exit here. Mainly because it's a bit overvalued and you've got 9% gains very nicely on Axis Bank. We will take a reposition whenever we feel it's right. Okay. So Axis Bank at uh, whatever this cost here. I need a call out bubble, not text. Why are you putting text again and again? <sighs> call out bubble, taking an exit here. Just I'm showing you live how I would do things, right? Exit Axis Bank uh, at 9% gain. Okay, we are done. Very good. And this is a, uh, what do you call that? This is a green exit we've got. So I'm very happy with the green exit. Thank you guys. We're all happy. Whoever did this, we've got a nice exit. So this is good. Great stuff. Okay, done. As you can see from here, approximately 9%. If I take it from here to here, yeah, 8.4, 8 8.84%. So on the swing trade opportunity, we've taken a nice, 9% exit on this. So thank you. Shake hands and move on. Anyway, this was fictional. This was not real, but I'm just showing you how things are done. Infosys. Infosys is now coming at a very scary point. I think it will break 1549. If it breaks this, it is going back to 1300. We will take a short position here. The minute it breaks this, we're going to take a downward position on this. Infosys, again, I would take an exit here mainly because the global outlook looks bad. Right. And this was what we took an entry at 4th November here at this range. Now we will take an exit here as well, only because global queues are looking bad or else we would have not exited this. Right. TCS. Again, this is only for short term traders. Please understand. This is only for short term traders. What I'm showing you for long term traders doesn't matter. You can keep accumulating more and stay invested. This was only something I was showing you how I would take an entry and how I would take an exit very clearly. TCS exit was approximately 2.5% gain. Okay. Just showing you this. Um, 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 so there we took the entry. Yeah, 2.5 percent gain. Fine, no issues. Be happy with whatever we have. Tata Lexi, nothing yet, no movement at all. HCL Tech, for all the people who took the position here, I would take a nice exit right now, and you would have got a significant exit. So don't be greedy. You've got again 9 percent. So for all, I know a lot of people who are watching this live are also invested in HCL. So for all the people who are in HCL. Please take an exit right now. Uh, you would have got a nice nine and a half percent exit over here, right? Thank me later. Buy me a cup of coffee whenever you're free. Okay. Coming to Wipro. Oh, Wipro bhai keeps going up and down, man. This is so unpredictable. Um, this is so unpredictable right now. Wipro nothing yet, right? Wipro nothing yet because again, it's taken a downturn. In fact, I would book loss here just to be safe. Actually, I would wait for two, three days. Other things I'll book loss instantly. Uh, let's see if it is broken the, how much down? Okay, we can take five, up to 5%, we can take a stop loss, okay? Maximum 5% will take a stop loss. So our stop loss trigger would be um, 381. If it goes below 381 without emotions, we will take an exit here. Right? But until that, I'm okay to play on the upward trend if it happens, but I don't think it's going to happen. 
technically i should take an exit here because we have barely lost money uh, but i would just wait and see because we, only reason why because wipro has taken been bajaud quite significantly right so that is bad boss what is this varun beverage is not stopping <laughs> I'm scared of Varun Beverages mainly because it's going up too much. Again, three percent rally. I think this is one of the best bets that we have had in the last one year. After Tata Alexi, I think Varun Beverages is one of the best bets that I've seen, which is only going up, only going up. It's on fire. It's scary fire. It's Statue of Liberty fire, as Dinesh is saying. It's scary because we have to look at it from an objective standpoint. It is definitely scary because it has not corrected, and I want it to correct. But and it's also overheated right now. I'm waiting for a correction to add more. But right now I cannot add more. Right? Sadly, whoever wants to take a position, this is not a good time to take a position. I'm waiting for a small correction to happen. But this is a good thing that we're all like we've taken a good bet on this and we're enjoying this. Lotus Labs, it's still here. uh this is come down here it's approximately here okay we'll hold because this is this pick we're playing a uh, november 4th pick this is actually a pick we're playing for one year so until one year i'm not going to touch this this is not a short term trade this i've actually taken for long term trade 36 36% up on varun beverages should we sell some uh i think a small booking wouldn't hurt uh, but again i would say wait for it to come down if it goes down 3 to 4% then you take a small exit but i would also say that um, a small profit booking if you are not greedy in life i would take a small exit right now on vbl because it's it's a bit too much man it's a bit too much right now happiest minds nothing again waiting for this line uh, what's happening with dmart nothing trading in the channel uh, nothing here kotak nothing banks are just in their own Deepak fertilizers three or pick we're still waiting it didn't break my 760 barrier i'm okay with this this is still in a, uh, this is a good time to accumulate this is a good uh, reward uh, risk to reward ratio is looking attractive here this is a good place where you can start accumulating more right so if you really want i'll put another call out this might goes very 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 bad uh, in the future i don't know uh, but i'll put both let me do one thing uh, can accumulate more uh stop loss 10% or actually 15% max stop loss okay max then we will exit if it goes below 15% from this line from 760 we will exit let's actually calculate a 15% stop loss from here 645 okay 645 exit we will do an exit at 645 over here okay till then this is my 3 year pick i'm waiting for 3 years with this with an accumulation zone constantly accumulating uh if i really go wrong with this my maximum loss i will accumulate with this is 15% maximum loss which is completely fine okay 15% is something i can afford but if you can't afford 15% i would say take a 10% uh, loss on this okay i would take a 10% loss on this if you can't afford it but i would take a 15% max loss on this is that okay cool for all the people who are asking for deepak fertilizers only okay bajaj finance hoo 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 guys what a pick we took what a pick we took look at this short position might go down looking at global queues and indian overheated markets this is something we took on november 19th weekend research live and right now it has already come down by how much loving this it has given you a 4% short position right now it has given you 4% ah uh, very interesting very interesting i think you can take an exit in this mainly because i'll tell you why okay for all the people who are there in november 19th this was something that we did again i would take an exit here for two reasons even though the market scenario looks bad but if the market scenario suddenly turns positive and if the cpi data and all the other data comes attractive then bajaj finance will be the first one to start rallying upwards because it has already corrected a lot right it will be the first one to go upwards so i would be very happy with this whatever percentage gain that we have got here which is approximately 4% okay let's take 4% here as an exit trigger okay we'll take a reposition again if we feel it's required okay exiting uh, on december 11 this is literally one month trade at a 4% gain this is on intraday if you do options and futures this would have been much more right exiting on december 11 4% gain uh, market and why right market next week looks volatile cool now market next we might take a position again if it goes down and we feel we can take an upward position we will take it definitely but right now the risk reward ratio everything all the odds do not suggest we take more heavy positions right now in this cool 
Bajaj FinServ, okay, pretty much okay here. Actually, this is a very good time to take a short position in Bajaj FinServ. It's just broken its support uh, quite significantly, but we will wait. We will wait for more confirmation on this, okay? Coal India, it's not moving much. Uh, SBI, hmm. Banking rally. I think we should exit banking stock, guys. Whoever is in banking stocks, I think we should exit banking stocks right now. This is given a good 4% gain, right? Long term plus swing trade opportunity we've got. Uh, Vignesh, stop spamming, boss. I'm not going to. So annoying when people spam. Uh, yeah. How many of you took. Okay, how many of you are taking advantage of these things as an experiment? Like in real life experiment? Have you guys taken advantage of these things in real life experiment? Okay, I'm just going to take a call out mainly and I'm going to tell why. Uh, long term investors hold, okay, for short, for swing trade, which we did, okay, we have 4% gain booked on 11th December. Next week, market looks volatile. We might come back, we might come back again and take another position, okay, we don't know. Oh, this is a nice way to do it. Green is nice. We know we have got 4.23% gain. Yeah. All this is paper trading experiment, which we're seeing live, huh? live in action. And what you can see now only by using logic, only by using risk reward ratio, we are seeing good gains coming out from both sides, profit and loss sides. Polycap, I'm waiting for a super entry. Uh, SBI, I'll make it red as well. Zomato, nothing, not even going close to it. SRF, nothing. Godrej, nothing. Uh, Sheffer correcting still. Birla Soft is going to become worse now. ITC again consolidating. Green ply we had taken a position. Oh my God, where did I put this? Hello. Either Raja Thoda. Yeah. Green ply I am taking a position. Again, this is a long term position, I think. Uh, mainly I am waiting for the next quarter results to come out. And it is coming to a point where either a breakout or a breakdown is going to happen. Uh, I would and we have put the stop loss very clearly defined that the stop loss is 139 uh, rupees from here. So the max we will lose if this goes bad is around 10%, which is fine, which is a very decent healthy stop loss to have. We have a stop loss of 10% over here at 139 and on an upward trajectory, we'll wait. We'll just wait and see what's going to happen. As I said, I want to wait for the next earnings quarter to come out and I want to see whether Greenfly gives a good result or not. It's just a play on good fundamentals and I want to see what happens. Right, so this is still in play. This position is still in play from a paper trading perspective. Green panel, nothing yet. Polyplex, yes, we have taken a one year, um, one year good fundamentals, one year hold wala situation for this. Again, I would say if you want to take a stop loss, I would take the stop loss again at 15% because I have a long term trajectory on this. So minimum 15%, I would put, if it was me personally, I would put a stop loss here, right? So let me outline the stop loss for you guys. Damn it. It was 1300 and something, right? Okay, let's do it here. Yeah, this would be my stop loss. I'm just making it red uh, for all the people who understand. This would be my stop loss going forward. Uh, if it goes below this, no emotions. I will take an exit, 10% loss a loss. I would say this is considered as a bad investment or a bad idea or a bad pick. But looking at the quarter on quarter growth, looking at the fundamentals, I would take a one year. And looking at the risk reward ratio because it's already gone down quite significantly, this would be a good entry point that I've taken right now. That is what I'm doing from a paper trading perspective. Electra Green Tech looks promising. It's come back to this point. If it breaks this point, we will take an entry position here for long term again, right? We need a significant breakout for this. But if it breaks this point, which is currently at a very good position, so just hope and pray that it goes above this. If it goes above this, at this point, we will take a new position. Okay, we're waiting on this. That is why it's in red. KEI, very good long term pick. It is going up and up and up. If the minute it breaks this red line, I will take an exit. It's very similar to Tata Alexi, right? The minute it breaks this red line, I will take an exit. But till now, it is in a good position. One year hold, good fundamentals. So we're continuing to go on this one by one. Okay, Reddington. Oh, damn. Damn, damn, damn. Okay, Reddington looks so good. So good. Can you guys see Reddington here? It looks so attractive. It's actually good and bad in the way because again, consolidation has not happened. Also, it's just given a breakout of an all-time high breakout. Um, so good. So good. Actually, it's given two breakouts, con consistently two breakouts. In fact, we should have taken, you should take a position here for long term. But again, because of IT trends, I'm getting scared, but this would be the perfect position right now. 188 would be a very good position, both from a swing trade and from a long term perspective. But I would say let's wait for one week on this only because IT stocks are under the scanner right now. If IT stocks were not looking bad, this would be my instant pick right now. 
so i'm going to wait for one week and then take up next week we will take a position because there is definitely a position to take here right but not right now it looks a little murky because all it stocks are taking a beating deepak nitride is not moving much asian paints also similar trend kpit was forming a cup and handle formation if i was not wrong it has completed the cup and handle it has to break 759 only then we will take but looks like sadly it looks like it's not going to break sadly it looks like it's not going to break mainly because it looks like it's going to go back into a downward trajectory right now right only because of the market conditions we'll wait for this week we don't know market conditions might not even go down it might just go up right we'll just wait even mass tech everything looks the same ifl very good this is actually a good consumption story you can play on ifl has recently given a breakout has retested and has broken out again ifl you can take a long term bet here ifl you can take a long term bet here i would wait maybe on monday to see if the market is low if the market is low we'll take a bet but i think you can take a long term bet here because looking at the breakout significant breakout has come down given us proper retest and now it's going back up and it is not significantly broken its high so i will wait till monday but this is on the radar for sure this is on the radar for sure for a nice entry point let's do this next week okay i'm going to keep ifl as um for next week okay sorry fine fine we'll do it for next week this is definitely something interesting for next week yeah why above nothing mol okay i think these are all the stocks that are user driven stocks right divis labs people wanted no divis labs not looking good still still not looking good cams i think um, wo ho ho mm very interesting okay this is the support but cams has come out to its lowest point right now it has come to its oversold position looks very interesting but i think ish mohit recently put today i think he put out a video few minutes ago on cams about how he studied cams i have not watched the video yet after this session i will watch that video um i would watch that video on the soic youtube channel watch that and then take a call i don't know if it's good or i don't know if it's bad but ishmoy has done i think a deep dive research into cams i'll watch that first and maybe give a call after that until then i don't want to give a call on cams because i'm not done the recent research on cams for all the people who are asking cams right uh, titan not a bad investment play for a long term i'll just wait for it to go above this line we'll take a bet uh, trient is again doing well no issues here ind hotels also is doing well no issues here voltas suffering mahindra and mahindra still on the high oh my god apl apollo so close so close guys so close for a nice position coming up next week another 4 5% gain position coming up next week beautiful very close just pray that it goes above this uh, but if it goes above this again recession proof this will give a good entry point about one one about this line we will take an a nice entry point over here actually not even about this i would take about this just to be a proper confirmation but very close 1111198990 is very 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 close this would be a good entry point yeah cool nazara cup and handle i'll check wait i'll check dabar yeah okay mm, ultra tech nothing rcf has just gone up even more i think it's a little overvalued right now but it's gone up quite significantly and we did an rcf deep dive last week i think if i'm not wrong rcf i don't know i like it uh, it's looking very attractive from a lot of angles right so i don't have any problem with rcf uh, mainly because land bank and revenue of what i'm seeing with chembur right now is insane itc we spoke about right i don't think there's anything going on with itc right now it's it's in its normal zone right now let's wait for it to give a proper trend it's in a no trend no trading nothing zone kind of a thing right so itc is not doing much yeah okay okay guys so let's do one thing now let's go to our weekend research quick weekend research of four companies now you are allowed to spam okay give me names of four companies and we will do quick research on these four companies don't talk about companies we have already done in the past because we have already done those companies in the past and in the meantime i want you guys to click on that like button because almost 500 people are watching and only 122 likes are there which is quite disappointing um considering the fact that my throat is also going every week when i do this uh, apart from this i also for all the people who don't know two more announcements um today at 6 pm i have a very nice master class that i'm doing uh, which is about how to identify and find multi bagger stocks again logic based not related to uh, i'm not going to tell you which stocks to buy or sell that's not what we do but it's on logic based on how to find these good stocks so that is happening at 6 pm today uh, if you want to be a part of it i think the link is there in the description about the master class uh, and i'm opening and 
even if you want to be a part of my community which is the paid bigger paid community that is there that can only happen if you come via the master class or else you will not get slots right so that is again happening today at 6 pm and then the next master class will be somewhere in feb because jan or maybe jan end uh, is when the next master class will be there so that is there number one uh, apart from that if you haven't checked out my credit card channel you can definitely check out the credit card channel i've pinned it in the comment above it so you can click on the credit card channel and subscribe to it because beautiful content keep coming out there i recently did a live also and guys click on the like button what is this conjuice it'll take you literally one second to click on the like button okay chalo let's take some people who are spamming left right center okay lemon tree okay i'm going to take one from our member because he's a member so they will get slightly higher priority start a poll we'll take one from that lemon tree okay sansera 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 i can't do guys i can't do sansera i'm sorry uh, there's a conflict of interest with sansera i can't do sansera okay i'll there'll be a lot of problems if i do sansera slight conflict of interest um uh, Amritanjan Health, I think, has already been done, so I'm not going to do Amritanjan Health. Trend, we've all Trent, Trent India also we've done, guys, already. Give me some uh, new name. Okay, DCB Bank, we can do. Yes, DCB Bank, not bad option. Okay, I've got Lemon Tree, I've got DCB Bank. I need two more options. Two more options. Also, don't give me companies that people have already done. Don't try to act smart. I know what people are doing in the space. So don't be smart. I'll try to act smart with me. Okay. The spam is on tube investments. Okay. Tube, whatever that is. Okay. Tube will do. Last one more. Ah. Yes, bank I'm not doing. Bharat Dynamics. Hmm. Bara dynamics over. The trend is over. Maniaver. What is maniaver? What nonsense. <laughs> Weirdly, all the people who are spamming have very similar names. All the people who are spamming have very similar names, uh, which is quite interesting. Which is quite interesting. Uh, Dr. Lal, there's nothing to check, man. It is in a very bad position. Whoever is in Dr. Lal, I don't. I think you should have exited long time ago. Borasil, we have done multiple times. Give me a better company. Ease my trip. Okay, since we're looking at uh, plays over there. Okay, guys, consumption theories are there here. Okay, okay, guys, four companies: Lemon Tree, DCB Bank, Tube, in, Tube. I don't know what that is. Tube. What is that? Yeah, it is Tube Investments. Okay, engineering company. Okay, so Tube Investments, uh, Ease My Trip, DCB Bank, Lemon Tree. Out of that two companies, Ease My Trip and Lemon Tree are in the travel and hospitality space. DCB Bank is in the banking sector and Tube Investments are in the engineering space for all the people who didn't know. Bus, now you can stop spamming. Manyavar is Vedant Finance. I'll do it uh, Vedant Fashions. Later I'll do, not right now. Uh, that's a good uh, case study to do actually. Vedant Fashions is a. Do you guys uh, want Vedant Fashions? I can do a separate video on Vedant Fashions. I can ask Devjani to like prepare a nice presentation for Vedant Fashions. If you really want to know how Maniavar works, uh, only if you guys like it. Uh, actually, do a, after this, like once this poll is over, I want you guys to do me a favor in this video, right? Because this video will be there until tonight, tonight at 12 o'clock, and then it will become private for all the other guys to watch. Um, I want you guys to comment below uh, and tell me what new stock you want me to do. Uh, which is a full presentation wala. like one stock full analysis on the like for example Vedant Fashions ke upar ek pura presentation like how I used to do before uh, because I think Devjani is now free for a bit so I'll ask Devjani to like create a nice thing for it oh Vishmoyat has already done Vedant and guys Vishmoyat has already done what why do you I'm not doing that there's no point two people do research on the same thing tell me something which is different if Ishmoed has done, he's already done with super research and super analysis. So there is no reason for me to do the same thing again, right? So you put it here below uh, and in the comment section, not here, not in the spam chat, leave the spam alone, put in the comment section below and we will track that later, okay? Till then you can keep liking it. Stop spamming names guys, stop spamming names, over, finish, finish, just vote.
only 186 people out of 500 people that means the remaining 300 people are very lazy who are watching this stream don't want to click on one voting this is like democracy every vote matters look at this tube investment is at 33 percent and is my trip is at 30 percent it's so close maybe because a lot of people are not voting or maybe because everyone wants tube investments that's also possible right but i would urge people to vote now i know it's so difficult to tell people to vote my god <laughs> live stream pe i'm not able to get my viewers to vote imagine getting the india to vote <laughs> my god <laughs> political pun crazy stop spamming guys stop spamming no more no more suggestions over see this tube investments 32 percent is my trip 31 percent come on finish it off guys i'll wait for another 15 seconds and then i'll stop whoever wants to vote can vote right what is 750 club so the the pinned comment is my new YouTube channel, which is called the 750 Club. Uh, the 750 Club is basically a credit card based channel because I felt in India there is no channel that talks about credit cards in specific and I use credit cards a lot and I get a lot of free stuff because of credit cards. And if I put credit cards on this channel, then you guys were getting irritated. So I said, let me make a separate channel for credit card information, which will be a long term channel after three, four years because there's nobody in the space right now. So all I just need your support. For all the people who are watching here, I just need your support to just subscribe there uh, and keep subscribed to that channel because we'll keep putting good information about credit cards. I just need your support. That's all. Okay. I'm going to stop the poll. We have around 258 votes and by a thin margin, Tube Investments has basically won by a thin margin. Okay. It has won 33%. So do Tube investments 33%, is my trip is at 32%. Okay, it's so close, it's so close, but sadly people are not voting. Okay, now it's become 34, 31%. Okay, I'm gonna stop this. Tube investments is 34%. So let's do let's do this. What I can do is chalo, let me be fair to everyone here. Can I give you a suggestion? Let me be fair to all of you guys here. Uh, tube investments I will do now a quick research whatever we do on weekend research is my trip I will do a proper presentation is that fine unless somebody has already done it which I don't know but let me do is my trip as a proper presentation because a lot of you guys want it and tube investments I will do right now as a quick research good fair to both parties okay yeah I should start a political party pro investor political party sabko khush rakhenge what will be my jhanda be? I don't know. Okay, let me first check tube investments. Are we crazy? If I, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, okay. Tube investments. Oh, recently massive. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is so nice. I know for a fact, one thing about tube investment uh, is that tube investment is held by a lot of mutual funds. A lot of small cap mutual funds are holding tube investments. Okay, so let's understand a little bit more about them. And right now, whoever has identified or whoever did this, I think the community itself chose tube investments. Right now, it is currently edging at its all time high, which is a very good position to take. Also, if you're considering taking a position, this looks very attractive right now. Let's make it green. This looks very attractive right now. Whoever, I mean, Kudos to the community. First of all, I would thank the community for finding this stock. It's obviously famous, but we can't keep tracking all the stocks. Uh, but all of you guys who are watching this, I think you should thank yourself and the people who voted for Tube India. This looks very attractive. Let's understand a little bit more because also there's a recent rally here. So I don't want to get too ahead of myself. But the rally is not too big also for it to be a big concern. And there was a recent massive thing. Let's understand more about Tube Investments. But very good. Whoever, this is the power of, I think, the community, right? It was added by MSCI along with VBL. Oh, very good. Very good. 58,000 crore company. So pretty much in the large cap zone itself. Uh, current price is 3,000. Dividend yield not, not very great. ROE and ROC is quite interesting for an uh, engineering company. Price to equity ratio is trading at 67 right now. Market cap to sales is 4 which is completely alright. What does Tube India do basically? Tube Investments basically is one of the India's leading manufacturer of wide range projects for major industries such as automotive, Railway, Construction, Mining, Agriculture. Company's three main verticals are Engineering, Metal Form Products and Bicycles. In line with the growth, the company has fallen into TMT bars. Okay, that is interesting. Uh, and looking at where their entire money comes from, Engineering Division, 29% of the money uh, compared to 44%, which has taken a small dip. 
Even metal formed has taken a small dip. Cycles division has given 17%. It sells cycles through its BSA, Hercules and Mondra. Ah, okay. Okay. Very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, very interesting. Okay. Let's, let's go more deep into this. Uh, so from a max chart perspective, looks very attractive. Looks like a long-term compounder from that perspective. From a one-year chart also looks very attractive. Um, going more into the revenues quickly. Let's look at yearly. Let's look, look whether it's a cyclical. No, it's not cyclical. It's pretty okay. Let's look at yearly revenues. Beautiful. Very, very good revenues with an average margin of 10 to 11% is what I would say. Yeah. Murugappa, Murugappa, Murugappa group also we can do. Good idea. Put in the comments after this guys. Just put in the comments of what you want me to do. I will outline four or five companies and Devjani will just make presentations on all. Good healthy Healthy net profit with a good increase, consistent increase in your EPS also. Good stock Kega. Uh, very good equity to reserves ratio. I mean borrowings to reserves ratio, which is debt to equity ratio is also looking very attractive. Very nice, man. Whatever this said and done. Good promoter holding. Uh, FIIs are increasing stake. This I know because this I saw in a lot of small cap funds in DIIs. Basically, I, I think SBI, DI, SBI holds this, right? A uh, lot of those guys hold funds in this. Let me check the DIIs. Yeah, SBI fund holds. Very good. Very good. Very good. 14% is DIIs. Uh, quite interesting <coughs> over here. Government holds almost nothing and public holds 12%, which is good because again, the free float is low. So one thing to understand here, guys, is this stock is very heavily dependent on, uh, very heavily de dependent on the FII and DII uh, movement. I'll tell you why. Because 46% is held by promoters and the remaining 40% is held by FIIs and DIIs. So if tomorrow, okay, this is one negative that I see of the stock as well. If tomorrow there is something that goes wrong with this company, both FIIs and DIIs will say Tata bye bye see you, right? And if that happens, you will see massive, I'm not talking about little, I'm talking about massive profit booking, right? Because as you see here, 46% is promoter. 26 plus 14 is again institutional investors, both DII and FII, which is 40%. So if this goes wrong or takes a wrong turn, then it will go down quite significantly and quite drastically, right? Or else no problem or else I don't see any problem in this at all. Now coming down, all of this looks good. Then why don't they have PPTs here? Why is the PPT 2019? Okay. Very interesting. Let's look at rating update once very quickly. So from a technical standpoint, looks good from a fundamental standpoint, looks good. Uh, I would prefer also looking at it from a, uh, let's see a research report as well. I'm sure there's a research report on this. Um, Crystal double A plus stable re-rating. Okay. This is on October 26th. This is very good. Very good. Crystal AA rating is very good. Yeah. 700 crore loan. Obviously I think the reserves are also around 3000 crore. So this is again, very, very, very good. Uh, let's look at what is happening due to strong cash generation. The company will also be able to retire entire debt ma materially, mainly at CG power, uh, healthy demand from end user segments like automotive and industrial machineries business drove the recovery, better contribution from a subsidiary, 58% subsidy CG power. Okay. Shanti gears, another subsidy that they have. That is why they're in the gear segment as well. Looks very good. Looks very good. Okay. I'm looking at the risk. If there is any. Weakness. Yeah. Bicycle sales volume sales is very weak. I don't know how many of y'all, uh, I don't know how many of y'all are cycle uh, people, but I think now a lot of people prefer Firefox and those type of cycles, right? Instead of Her Hercules and BSA, uh, we're going into more functional kind of cycles. I'm pretty sure they're also in that space. Uh, but now people are going more for branding. Okay. So sluggish sales. I am completely all right with that. Past vulnerability to intense competition and cyclical slowdown, especially from automobile and engineering sector. This I feel is not going to slow down right now in the next few years. This I feel is not going to slow down. I feel this is going to become more and more interesting, uh, both from automobile engineering and the normal sector. This is going to become more. This is actually a very good bet you can take for the next few years. I think we can take a bet. I think we can take an open position on this right now. I have no problem with this. This looks very attractive. I don't see this going wrong until and unless something really wrong happens. I don't see this going wrong at this point right now. This looks very attractive. Ideally, I would love to have seen a PowerPoint presentation on this. I'm pretty sure uh, there would be a check. Uh, one 
sec this will reveal my thing give me a sec let me just let me just log into trend line or else it'll reveal my uh, what do you call that my email id and then i know a lot of you guys don't respect it sadly and you will just uh, spam me on that okay beautiful coming back thank you for the patience yeah look at this all of them have given buy ratings all the buy ratings have worked out well recently motila lawsol has come out with a buy rating which has already gone up 35% target met uh, of tube investments which again comes to question is it little overvalued but this is a very good uh, thing that you can read for all the people who like reading research reports let me show you how to quickly read research reports as well uh, ev is a, is a big focus area under the ti2 strategy which plans to cater to four segments So basically, performance was driven by strong revenue growth. Particularly, engineering business traction is revenue is expected to continue. Okay, very good. Driven by recovery in underlining auto volumes, traction in railways. Very good. We have maintained our FY22-24 estimates and buy rating with two target price of two three eight zero. It's gone above target price of two three eight zero also, right? Okay, very good. Strong growth. Engineering business is still there. Railway business has started to see traction. Yes, this is something that I've seen that India is doing a massive revamp of the railway business, and that is why you see all your railway stocks also going up. Um, EVs remain a big focus, which is completely fine. Uh, diversified revenue streams, okay. I would like to know what is the breakup of the revenue. Ah, segmental mix. This is what I wanted to see. Okay. Uh, according to FY22, majority is engineering business, so that is great. That is good to know. Okay. Majority is Q4 is also revenue is coming from this. and the second biggest revenue is coming from metal form business which is i think the tmd bars third comes from mobility and fourth comes from other business this is fine this is fine as long as this is the moat i'm okay with that um exports were 16% which is very low even if it gets affected not much 21% engineering will, ne will never stop that's the great thing about engineering it will never stop i think we can take a bet on this guys this looks very good you guys can go check read this out as well whenever you guys are free um this doesn't look bad at all for all the people who are thinking about doing i just want to see what is the eps roe and roc to expand pat to expand very very good uh what is the projected pat is fine uh here this is the main thing i want to see projected eps they're going at 114 at that time okay projected eps earnings per share is going to be 114 okay So basically, another thirty, forty, fifty, forty, fifty percent gain. Almost, actually, they're they're predicting it at six, five thousand rupees per share. Kind of a target is there, according to FY twenty five E estimates, uh, which will go even more further because that is just the estimates they're taking today. So if it actually reaches this in FY twenty three, this will become uh, easily this will triple over maybe five years. Maybe over five years it will triple. So not if it continues this trajectory. So from a fifty-eight thousand market cap company, it can become one lakh fifty thousand crore market cap company. This is possibility is very high. Possibility is very high. Yeah, I'm just looking at it from a return ratio perspective. Okay, dividend payout ratio is very less anyway, so it's okay. Dividend yield is not to be considered. ROE ROC is very attractive. Very attractive. very 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 attractive okay i think we don't need to look further i think whoever gave this recommendation very good i think we can take a, a buy call on this right now itself uh, but this is going to be a long term buy call okay this is let's keep it normal blue uh december 11th uh today is 11th or 12th 11th only right yeah december 11th 2022 good why is the reason good fundamentals um can hold for long term risks what is the risks uh heavy dependence on fii and dii be aware of massive sell off okay maintain stop loss at around 15 to 20% depending on your appetite cool we can take a position here which is this which is quite good i think i'm going to add this in my core portfolio as well this looks very nice 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 find i think i'll add this in my portfolio also uh this will be a stop loss of 20% is what i can take max loss so if i assume 20% if it all it goes down so much 
it is 2411 right so let me put the stop loss indicator here let me just put it here as well and this will be my stop loss which is red okay i'll put it here 2411 stop loss it's a huge stop loss it's a very big stop loss i'm assuming that it won't go down uh, but you can take a position here i see the maximum it can do is it can just come down a little bit consolidate and go up uh, but looking at the fundamentals i'm looking at a long term picture of 2 3 years i would keep this as a hold for at least 2 to 3 years i think 3 years will take for it to come uh, for it to actually give good results on this so yes i think this is a very 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 good stock uh, from what i can see right now uh, again let's let's keep this on our tracking list as well yeah cool okay coming back okay guys coming back to my first and foremost important question did you guys learn something today or else this whole waste whole thing that we did today is a waste right uh, did you guys learn something today just to give you a recap we looked at what is happening from a macroeconomic standpoint we looked at whether to invest right now or whether to invest later uh, we looked at what is happening with the global queues with respect to cpi data with inflation data what might happen what are the odds what are the probability uh we looked at a lot of stocks with respect to its technical analysis standpoint we did some paper trading and we took some exits on the paper trading where we are now two exits at 10% one exit at 5% one exit at 2% uh 2 and 3% and we have also taken a new fresh position today on tube investments as a paper trading experiment again uh so these are some good stocks and again i want to thank you guys which is your community members all of you guys for finding these stocks out so other people can also benefit from learning this i would suggest you still need to do more research on tube investments i would say go and check their investor presentation go check more research reports but from a red flag versus green flag perspective very very i don't see much red flags apart from the heavy investments from dii and fii which i feel will become a problem going forward but right now i think everything looks quite attractive and quite interesting apart from that i think this is it for today's session we might do a session next week i'm traveling to goa so if you guys are in goa big hello i'm going to visit goa next week uh for 3 4 days uh today's master class i'm going to see you guys for the master class who are coming today at 6 pm uh, i think the zoom link is shared with all the guys who have registered for it so i'll see you guys at 6 pm and at 8 pm i'm going to meet my pro investor academy guys uh, which is my community session that i'm doing today as well we're going to do a little bit of basics of technical analysis so we're doing a mix of both that is happening today so it's going to be very exciting uh but a big day for me because three live sessions today three live sessions so it's going to be very tiring uh but i have my coffee to save me again i love coming here i love doing this every week um uh, and as i said i'm trying to be more and more uh regular on this so i'm keeping track of being regular so not a problem at all but again love having you guys and take care have a great weekend and watch the world cup we have semi finals and finals coming up sadly ronaldo is not there but at least the other guys will be there okay chalo this is me shashank udupa signing off take care see you guys bye